Now, we talked about um, sensors, variations of sensors, but let's now look at some specific sensors and understand what each of them does and how he does it. But when we look at the robot, for example, let's look at it as, from a control point of view, let's look at it as a star. We have the controller. It basically has a star. There are sensors all around it providing data to the control controller so it makes decisions what to do next. And there are different type of sensors. Touch sensors enable the robot to feel and react to its environment. Sound sensors, light sensors, there's a long list. We're going to go in uh, to each of them to, uh, to explain how they work in some applications. But look at the robot from a control point of view as a star configuration. Controller and having set of sensors all around it transmitting information to it. Ultrasonic sensor. What is ultrasonic sensor? They generate ultrasonic pulse in a particular direction. Now, if there is an object in the range of this pulse, part or all the pulse will be reflected back to the transmitter as an echo and can be detected through the receiver. So, ultrasonic transducer energy being reflected back to the sensor and based on the amount of energy, the level of, of, the, of the waves that are coming, the intensity, we know exactly what, uh, what is the distance. And not only the level, but also the difference in time. When we send ultrasonic waves, it takes them time to go and hit the obstacle and being reflected back. The difference in time tells us the distance. And tells us the distance because of the time it goes back and forth. Now, in order to know exactly where a robot is, to know exactly the XY coordinates of a robot at this time, sometimes we locate ultrasonic sensors in the area in a very well uh, pre-programmed uh, locations. And the robot itself, being the red dot in the center, sends, sends ultrasonic uh, to all sides. These ultrasonic uh, waves get heated by the, um, um, by the three um, uh, receivers. They reflect back the sounds. And if the robot look at uh, uh, the orange one and look at the green one and look at the blue one and they're all coming from the same, coming to it, back to it, really reflected at the same time, that means that the robot is in the center of all the three, in that area of the, that being that overlap of the three circles. That means, again, robots transmit ultrasonic waves, they hit and they come back. If they come back on all these three at the same time, that means the robot in the center. If a little bit uh, the orange uh, reflection came earlier, that means the robot knows exactly where it is compared to the three reference points. So that's a way to know and to analyze the position of the robot. And as the robot continues to move from one place to another, going between sets of ultrasonic receivers, it will understand based on the difference in time when a sound wave, when an ultrasonic wave comes in, where it is located and know what to do next. And two ultrasonic sensors sometimes are not enough because two ultrasonic sensors come up with two points where the robot can be. And it is the two connection points of the two circles. But in a workspace limited in half area, only two ultrasonic bases are required to determine the right solution. In most, in most cases, we will need three ultrasonic sensors. But when we, when we limit the working envelope to half, that means the robot can be only on one side and not in the other side, so two are enough. And here are some samples of ultrasonic sensors. 
first of all, the operating envelope. We can see the, the egg shape of envelope of the ultrasonic waves that are coming. We can have, in, we have them sh uh, narrower or wider, depending on basically the amount of money we want to invest and basically according to the needs. But here are a set of uh, uh, sensors, that uh, ultrasonic sensors, that, um, uh, that uh, will do the job. And the one on the right, rangefinder, is a transmitter and a receiver. The system will transmit ultrasonic wave. They receive it. The receiver will receive it, the reflected wave, sometimes later. And like we said before, based on the time difference between the transmitting wave and the receiving wave, we will know the, the range, the distance of that particular object. Camera. It is used to determine the relationship between a three-dimensional geometric location of one point and its corresponding point in the image. We talked before about nominal picture stored in a memory, actual picture being uh, compared, superimposed on that, and if they are identical, we know exactly what we're looking at. If there is a mismatch, we know exactly what to do in order to look at it, either move it one side, move it another side, getting further away or closer, but we are looking for a super, fully superimposition of one on top of the other, actual on top of the nominal. Comparing an actual picture to a nominal picture tells the controller exactly where the robot is looking at in order to direct it what to do next. Accelerometers. Accelerometers measure static acceleration forces such as gravity, therefore allowing tilt sensors. Accelerometer basically is a three-dimensional mechanism within these components demonstrated here in the picture that tells the device exactly in which tilt position it is. These tilt applications, and we'll deal about, we'll describe to about them in a minute. These tilt accelerometers, using mercury within that particular box, and that mercury moves through a hollow, um, a hollow uh, device, hollow parts, and according to when the the drop of mercury leaves point number one and go to point number two to create a short, that particular distance tells us the acceleration rate. And if we'll change the, the, if we'll tilt to the other side, that drop of mercury will go back from point number two back to point number one. And according to the difference in time between when it left point number one, point number two, and came to point number one, we will know the, acceler the acceleration rate. So not only the tilt, we'll see the tilt later, but again the acceleration, the rate of acceleration of deacceleration. It's the time between the drop of mercury leaving point one and reaching point two. This is covering certain length, and it's all within the device. It's covering certain length in certain time tells us about acceleration of the device itself. And if we, if we locate this device on the robot, that information will go to the computer with this acceleration data help assisting in the computer, the robot, what to do next. Light intensity sensors. Here we have a picture uh, on the right hand side with uh, north, south, east and west um, uh, lights and a sensor in the center knowing exactly where, how much light we receive from each direction, so we know exactly where, compared to global system, where the robot is located, where the robot is looking at. If we have lights coming from four places, from, from directions, and the robot receives more light from this side, less light from behind it, more on this side and less from the left, it knows that it's actually going into, uh, pointing to a specific, co a specific quarter. 
Now, the relationship of the, the differences in values, it knows exactly where in this quarter um, the lights actually come and where actually it's pointing to. Color sensing. We talked about agriculture before. Here we have a color detector. And this color detector can be used to detect an orange the, and, and identify the color or having a color camera. But here we have a color sensor. We have a color sensor in, in manufacturing, for example, where we don't want to use a camera. This is a simple, simple um, uh, technique. It outputs variable analog volts representing the color. We can calibrate the, the entire range of colors. So red, certain level of red, will uh, generate so much um, voltage. And whenever we have an object painted in a specific red, we will get that, number, that level of voltages compare it to nominal one, which is resides in the computer, and if both actual level of voltage is identical to the nominal one, that means the red is the red that we were looking at. Now this is analog, analog voltage, but it can be also digital signals to <coughs> whenever we get uh, a color match. So whenever the two reds, the nominal one and the actual one actually identical, we get a, a digital signal. In agriculture, we said it's for optimal harvesting. To get the orange or to get the strawberry at their best whenever the red of the strawberry is, a, is identical to a reference red. Line sensor array. Here we have an example of eight pairs of transmitters and receivers. Eight transmitters and eight receivers. And if the robot needs <coughs> to identify a position of a particular object, that object can have a line on that, a reflecting line on that. That particular board uh, 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 encapsulated in a case can be located in the robot arm and the robot actually will go and whenever it will see that particular reflective tape in the right position, in the right angle, it will know exactly that this is the object that the robot is looking, looking for. So it's identifying objects and specific positions of the objects. Let's say that that particular box with the line of eight pairs is located, is placed, mounted in 45 degrees on the robot arm. And the robot arm actually does not change the orientation. It's just looking for a, a tape, reflective tape, or an object that has a reflective tape in the same angle as the line of the eight pairs. Once the information is being received, the robot system will know exactly the orientation of the, of the object being tested. If it's not, if the orientation of the object being tested is a little bit tilted, it's not exactly uh, aligned with the orientation of the a, a line sensor array, the controller will understand exactly how much it is tilted compared to where it should be. Ambient light sensor, very simple, works with photoresistor. It allows to have a DC voltage output depending on the brightness of the light. It is calibrated in such a way that dark has a low value and it detects intensity of ambient. Very, very important in terms of manufacturing, warehousing, logistics, and, and um, assembly. Detecting ambient light, very simple sensor. Thermal array sensor is something completely different, and it, it is to detect human body heat. Basically, it has an array of sensing, of, of minute cells, micro cells, thermal cells that when placed in front of some body, then a matrix of, of data coming in from the body being detected by the thermal arrays cells. So we can create a map of the heat coming from the body, from the object we test. 
we can we can have uh, uh, we can conclude if there are heat pockets. We can conclude conclude if a body is homogeneously um, um, uh, transmit heat outside. We can know if there are leaks of heat, hot waves. We can understand the behavior of that particular object according to the heat waves that are coming more or less to different areas within a matrix. So that matrix of cells in the, within the thermal array will tell us exactly where is the problem in the object that we're looking at. FSR, four sensors, very, very commonly used in robotics. They're coming in circular, they're coming in square pads. And FSR, force sending res uh, resistors, they're very thin, they're robust, and they're made up of a polymer thick film, PTF, that decrease the resistance when increase the pressure. So whenever we take a force sensor like this and we bend it, we apply force to it, there the, um, the resistance, the internal resistance of the force sensors goes down. And according to the force that we apply, the resistance will change and we can calibrate that particular test, create a table between forces and resistance and apply pre-programmed force to the device. Vibration sensors, extremely important in robotics. As robot moves and they do pick and place, what we need to check many times is whether the, the path that is being taken from pick position to place position is vibrating. Some things, that some objects that we carry from pick to uh, place positions should not be vibrated should be a smooth operation. Remember the AGV that was floating half a centimeter above the, the concrete floor in a production line, in a factory, in manufacturing, in a warehouse. It is because the sensitive parts that we wanted actually to uh, transform from the warehouse to the assembly line should not be vibrated. So it, it, the AGV was actually up and there were vibration sensors there. It may, they made up of piezoelectric transducers. Now, as the transducer is displaced from the mechanical neutral axis, bending creates strain. And this strain generates voltages. And we can read the voltages. And normally they are analog voltages and we have to convert it to digital to get a very, very uh, high resolution. To, uh, to analyze the level, the intensity of the vibrations. So this strain is created because the, the shape and the, the, the shape, the physical shape of the sensor itself. Look at the ring. The ring being away from the center of gravity, from the, uh, from the point of connection, the ring actually can vibrate according to uh, the process that it actually uh, integrates with. That particular vibration creates voltage. This voltage is being generated uh, and, and transmitted to the controller, convert to digital, analyze to see whether to stop the movement from point one to point two or continue with it. Limit switches. Limit switches are, ba are basically uh, uh, in order to uh, have um, understand to to, uh, to get an input to the controller that an obstacle has been hit, or to get to the end position of the robot. And normally, we use two limit switches in series, one after another, located physically close to each other, because of a safety precaution uh, reasons. When a robot moves along a path, and it has a limit switch at the end, and it should stop at that particular limit switch. It will hit the limit switch, have, being a sensor, it will send this data, the controller will stop the motors, the robot will stop at that particular limit switch position. But if that particular limit switch is faulty, we don't want to, the robot to continue. 
So immediately after that, we, see, we, we locate and connect another limit switch, which is a backup to the first one. So there are two in series. One, which is normally operating when everything is okay, it's where we want the robot to stop. If it's faulty, we don't want the robot to continue, the other one will back up and we will cause the system to be stopped. A line follower. We talked about AGVs before. Here we have a device that actually um, has, is a light, dark um, uh, detector. Detect light or detect dark surfaces. It's also for pick and place. We go from a, a particular point where we detect a black spot and we put it, place it in another uh, uh, position, another place when there is another black spot in a white environment. And it creates autonomous robot behavior because the robot actually will go from black spot to black spot to black spot. Or if it programmed to go from white spot to white spot to white spot. Because we have here a line follower, a sensor that discriminate between uh, light and dark, between white and black. A circular touch sensor. It's a capacitive, capacitive type of uh, circular sensor and it can work through a glass. The object is located anywhere on the circular touch sensor. For example, if we need to clean something and we need to shine, when we need to shine things, we want to know that where we are at any given amount of time, where we are at the thing, at the object that we want to shine. So we have this uh, circular touch sensor that as we shine and as we clean the object, we know exactly where the object touch our cleaning. And this is why it can work. This is a, an advantage of being able to, and to analyze the values even through a glass. We talked about tilt sensors, but here is uh, a presentation, a very fine presentation of a directional tilt sensor. Look at the picture on the left. You'll see uh, a hollow cylinder where there is a drop of mercury inside it. And as we tilt that small PCB, this drop of uh, mercury will move along this hollow um, cylinder. When it reaches to the other side, it closes uh, some, some um, switch to say, I am here, I have reached to the other side. So we will know exactly the direction of the tilting. And if uh, the picture on the right hand side is basically four sensor states inside that particular, the, the picture on the right, inside that particular small device, there are four sensors this way, this way, this way and this way, so we will know exactly at the position or orientation of the object that we're looking at or the position and orientation of the robot itself. Proximity sensing. It's a, a distance measurement and can detect metal, non-metal, liquid, powder and granular materials. It's a capacitive uh, type of um, sensing and there is no need for contact. So even without contacting, because it's a capacitive, we can uh, analyze the distance between the sensor itself and the object being sensed. Now the standard detecting distances can be varied according to the sensitivity level of the sensor. And the sensitivity level of the sensor in some different sensors can be adjusted on that particular sensor, make it more sensitive or less sensitive. There is a screw on the back that, that one can, can adjust the sensitivity. But again, it's a non-contact range detector of, of metal, non-metal, etc., etc., of material.